one, go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 219, the security podcast on the In30 network. It's been a long hour and a half. So if you haven't heard us for the last hour and a half, it's because we've been trying to get something working. Again, we've been talking about this, why Google Hangouts decided to kill its functionality and just cease to exist with no anything it's just beyond me. It, it feels like so, there should be somebody in the space and maybe somebody doesn't want to pay. Maybe it's a monetary restriction. I don't know what it is, but I'm ready to pay some money to get this working. Not a lot of money, but some money. And I'm sure other people are. We cannot be the only people who do interviews, I don't know, over the internet. This can't be. So let's, well, let's say hi to Tom. Hi, Tom. Hey, everyone. I'm here. I mean, Tom's the resident podcast watcher. I mean, we cannot be the only people who do this. I, I agree. I, I honestly do not know why this is so difficult. It really shouldn't be. I, it's it's literally, uh, it's it's WebRTC streams, and you muck some video together. And on the server side, you have like a hidden watcher, a camera that doesn't show up, and it sits there and records. And you, you take the stuff, and you smush it together, and then you pipe it to YouTube, and you're done. Um, but, but now we, are, we have taken Firefox, disabled the hardware acceleration so that uh, OBS could capture the Firefox window. And I've now cropped us or cropped our window capture, two different window captures down to capture our video, and then placed them on the left and right that you see here. Um, and then we've got the world's worst, like lower two thirds right there. Uh, as a matter of fact, the video right now, you can see that, that Haim is actually, his video is a little bit bigger than mine. Um, I'm gonna fix that eventually, but the, the level of jank just hasn't stopped. I mean, I, I just searched for some sort of hangout replacement and found three on the Google knowledge base that we will look into, but I think those are literally the only three that are, are in existence. Like, and there was a product that we were using many years ago, uh, clip me or something dot me. That was awesome. And I think what it is, is that they just don't want people to stay on all day and use it as a surveillance tool. I'm okay with saying you get 30 minutes or an hour for free, like once a week or whatever it is. Something like that. Anyway, this is episode 219, and I had a long rant about how I've been helping my dad trying to do th uh, tech-based things, uh, whether it's hook up the internet, routers, all this other stuff, and I'm just incredibly frustrated by how difficult all this is. Now, for me, it's not difficult, but just changing UIs and UXs is difficult for most people. It's, it's the reason I get my parents the same phone that I have, but... All of a sudden on, I don't know, Monday or Tuesday, I've been on vacation the last couple of days. Uh, Cam Scan Pro, it's this app. It's this uh, it's this phone app where you install it on your phone, I guess mainly Android, and it takes pictures and it does OCR to the text and everything else. The problem was somebody inserted malware on it, and as they were updating it, it's an update attack, uh, people were getting malware on their uh, Android phones. And Google did, once they heard about it, they pulled it from the Play Store, but it is still on your phone and we still have problems with it. Right? Yeah. So as far as I know, and I'm, I'm looking for the latest update right now, um, I don't see... Uh, it looks like they might actually be back in the Play Store. Okay, so I have this from uh, Android Police. Okay, so June seventeenth. I'm just reading the last three, uh, the last, the last three digits. Nine zero six one six unsafe. Nine zero six two four unsafe. Nine zero seven zero eight unsafe. Seven ten unsafe. Seven two three unsafe. Seven two five unsafe. And then August first, seven thirty is safe. 809 is safe, 814, 816, 820, 825 are all safe, with the last update being August 25th. So... I, I take it back, it looks like they are not in the Play Store uh, as of this moment. Um, but uh, they they have you know, fully admitted, they said, hey, uh, this was a, uh, a third-party um, 
advertisement SDK uh, called AdHub. Um, we integrated it, and uh, it's been reported for being a malicious module that produces unauthorized advertising clicks, as well as all kinds of nefarious stuff. So um, it looks like a, a typical, you know, uh, poisoning of uh, the supply chain. It's look, it's it's really scary because it's really hard to explain this to average users to say, hey, uh, not only so we first we tell you download only from the Play Store from the from the iTunes Store. Um, don't do third party sources unless you absolutely know exactly what you're doing. Uh, the most famous one being the Amazon App Store. If you're going to do that, which is safe, and I have no problems recommending it. But other ones that they have, just know what you're doing. So you tell people to do all this. Don't check third-party sources. Do this. Use the Play Store. And then magically now this comes up. And we've always talked about, okay, there's apps that have this. And it's usually it's usually like adult content skeevy apps that have a 1,000 people on it that, that are trying to replicate and insert malware. No, this is a really popular uh, uh, program. We, in our WhatsApp group, we found out that a majority of people use it. I've never used it. I may have downloaded it many, many years ago, but then subsequently uninstalled it because I don't use it. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember way back in the day, uh, I actually downloaded and used this a decent amount. Um, I had since gotten rid of it because I didn't really need a document scanner anymore. I didn't need things to look like they were scanned. I, I didn't need to like drag the corners to make the paper perfect or anything. I literally just stopped working with paper at some point in my life. And I just lost the usefulness for this application. Um, if, if you do want to continue using it, uh, I don't want to like just blast this developer and say, you included a, a third party SDK for advertising purposes and it, it got the best of you. And, you're the worst because you have ads. Like I, I don't want to go down that road. If you are really, really, really desperate to still use this application, at the very least, remove the one that's on your phone and then go to camscanner.com to download their new version directly from them. Yes, it's unauthorized sources. Yes, it's not in the Play Store. But if you absolutely, you know, you you have no other alternatives, nothing else will work, um, and you need that application it's better to enable unauthorized sources and grab it from the official website rather than continuing to use the blacklisted version. That's full of malware. It's look, I get it. Now the, the developer didn't do this to make money. They're, they're looking to, to add like this wasn't done maliciously. It was done. They wanted to make money. This uh, advertising developer, there's this advertising SDK, you insert it, it shows ads in whatever way the developer wants, and then they get some money for it. And and we, we've talked about this. You don't have to hack the app. You have to hack all the sources that lead to the app. So if you can get the, if you can poison the advertising network, and we've talked about how major websites have been uh, had this, apps have had this, then you can then you can uh, cause problems. And this is exactly what happened. Yeah. It, anytime you load in third-party code when when you're a programmer there's uh, you very rarely will code everything from scratch it's it's you know I, I would say the exception rather than the rule um you will always pull in stuff like you know uh third-party sdks or it's not a bad thing. As a matter of fact, a lot of these frameworks will do really nice security things for you. Um, you know, famously Rails uh, allows you to build really powerful applications. Um, you know, relatively simple web apps are relatively simple to build. Uh, building them securely though is difficult and Rails takes all the hard security work and for the most part, just abstracts it away for you. You don't have to worry about it. They've done the heavy lifting. They keep you safe. Um, this is a third party ad network. They, you know, promise the developers, hey, we'll show advertisements on your platform for your free users who haven't played, paid for a license. And you're going to get, you know, a couple pennies every ad click. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, what is wrong uh, is that, you know, somebody decided, yeah, you know, we could make more money by throwing in some malicious clicks and maybe subscribing people to really, really awful subscriptions behind their back and 
that's that's where things get really shady. And the fact that the devs threw this in and then didn't closely watch it after the fact, I get it. It happens. But it does point to maybe kind of an endemic problem in their development house. And so, and apparently if you read this Android police article, and again, we were, we, we were having trouble finding a really good article that explained this. This did come from Kaspersky, so we will link to there as the official source of it. But this Android police article is giving me the source names, said that this company put in uh, unskippable full-page ads when you loaded up the free version. And I'm looking, how much does it cost to upgrade to premium? And the answer is $1.99. And to me, that sounds one awfully cheap, but two, a dollar ninety nine. We can't afford a dollar ninety nine. Like, come on. So you have to you have to support the developers. Not everything can be free. They're doing this thing that you use apparently people use all the time, and you don't want to pay the dollar ninety nine that it costs to remove all the ads. It's one of those things that this is probably why we can't have the nice things. Yeah, yeah. I mean. A buck ninety nine, just just pay the buck ninety nine. Call it done. Um, I free apps and the the insane amount of ads you'll get from free apps. Um, it's kind of I don't want to say one of the problems with Android. It's actually really nice that more people have access to more applications. The downside is that there's a lot more advertising going on. It's you know it's a balance. Uh, whereas on the iOS platforms, you know, uh, free apps are you know, I, I don't want to say the exception, but, you know, it's definitely the fact that there are more paid things on the iOS app store than there are free things. Uh, and that's that's OK. Uh, it's just a different different model and different way of operating. Um, I, I do want to say that uh, Kaspersky does use this uh, this article um, and it, it was good work. It was absolutely uh, a thing that they needed to publish. But at the bottom, you know, and throughout the article, they've got ads for, hey, this wouldn't have happened to you. Have you or uh, had you installed Kaspersky for Android? Uh, just to let you know, Android applications are all sandboxed from each other. They shouldn't ever touch each other. And the, the most access an android app could possibly get does not let them get to the root level like windows antivirus software windows antivirus software runs at the system level runs at the root level uh, and it actually can get its hands into everything which is also what makes them dangerous to run in the first place but android apps unless you're running an antivirus as root which by the way you're not and they can't they don't have access to do that the absolute best thing that they can do is basically maintain a whitelist and blacklist, maintain a list of known malware. And if that, if an app that you have installed shows up, they go, Oh no, it's a virus. It, it's not actually AV in the way we think of AV. They're literally doing the exact same thing that play protect does. And that Google services are already doing. So don't install an antivirus on your phone. It literally burns battery and space, and it gives you no benefit. Um, I, I get why they're advertising it, but it's literally you're just buying snake oil at that point. It's, I mean, we've spoken about this, and again, we've spoken in depth about how you shouldn't be buying, uh, what's, should be paying or downloading any sort of AV for either phone, either iOS or Play Store. And all it's doing is, like you said, it's checking the, the default Play Store things. Now, do things slip up? Of course they do. Apple has that. I, uh, Android has that. The issue is what do they do when they're done? So they've pulled it off. It's a very slippery slope to say that they're going to they're gonna automatically remove it from your phone. That gets a little freedom-ish and dystopian future there. But... It's they should they should alert. You know what I would like a notification from the Play Store. Hey, we noticed that we deleted this app for malware violations. You may want to uninstall it. I don't know. Can they do that? Is that okay? Yeah, I mean, I, I frankly, depending on the malware, uh, and Google has done this in the past. They have a kill switch. If you are running an Android phone with Google Play services on it, they have the ability to go into your phone and just delete anything they want at any point in time. Uh, it's a little big brotherish, I'll admit, but let's say that there's a rampant zero day outbreak of malware and it's it's worming its way through everyone's Android phones. I 
I'd want a kill switch in place somewhere. You know, if if it's not Google, then who's going to own it, right? Um, it's I think it's okay to trust the developers of the platform to be able to clean up malware on their systems. Uh, frankly, it's it's a better situation than we've had on desktop operating systems ever. Uh, I mean, Apple is just now getting their, um, and by just now, I mean within the past like five years, uh, getting their um, kill switches in order to be able to destroy malware, which they have used famously on Zoom, which we talked about a few weeks ago. Um, but, uh, you know, for a very long time, Windows had nothing of the sort. Uh, they're kind of getting around to it with uh, the Defender products. But again, it's not the level that Google's got control over Android. It's OK. So they so and I know what Google what everyone's saying, oh, anytime this happens, they can do it. It's, so far, it's not. It's uh, and I want to segue into another story about this. But basically, it's if they're going to do something like that, they have to know they have to know that they're going to get the blowback. So they better make sure that they do it on uh, the first time on something that's that's really bad, something that that destroys the phone or my, or uh, does crypto ransomware or anything like that. But if they're going to do it because something puts some spammy ads, don't you're not that they're not going to do. Yeah, it, this has got to be really, really nefarious malware for them to actually pull pull that card. Um, this stuff, you know, really nasty ads and, you know, signing people up for paid subscriptions. Yeah, OK, it's bad. I mean, it's it, it's nowhere near good. There's a reason that Google pulled it from the Play Store in the first place. But does it necessitate the nuclear option? Yeah, I'm saying no. Look, I, I never want that. That's always the last option. I always want the. I I rather some sort of notification through the Play Store. Hey, uh, this is there. This is how you can uninstall it. But if you're going to do it, make it easy because I know people who see these notifications and get really scared. Uh, for you're going to access my location. What do I do to that? Or it needs my microphone, and you have to explain to people. No, you're literally using a map. It needs to know your location, or it's going to take a picture of something. It needs to know. It has to have access to your camera. So putting notifications in also adds to the noise level that that that's either scare people or just make people ignore it. So one thing I've seen, um, kind of more modern. Uh, apps do or, or more recent apps do and this is mostly because you can finally do this on android now um is that in your you know first time setup or your wizard when you first launch an app um it'll walk you through and say hey um we'd like to send you notifications for this thing so we're going to ask you about that do you want that and it gives you a yes or no. If it hits no, you just go on to the next step. If it hits yes, you'll get the Android or iOS pop up saying, hey, this app wants to send you notifications. Do you want to? Uh, and it's it's really nice for the user because the application, before they even prompt you with the OS you know, security permissions dialogue, uh, they will tell you, we're going to ask for this position or, or position. We're going to ask for uh, this permission for these reasons uh, so we can do these things. Cool. That's great. Hey, we want to know your location so we can tell where you're at to show you bus schedules around your current location. Is that cool? Seems reasonable to me. You just have to be aware that they may do it. So they may say that it may look cool. And then on the back end, they're harvesting data, like the weather channel app. For and sure. all that. So you have to worry about that. But I want to lead into another segue of the same, the exact same idea. Um, my godfather calls me up. I don't know, a few weeks ago, he wants a tablet for his wife who just plays uh, stupid games. And I said, don't install on your phone. There's too many ads. Go buy. And I actually said a Fire tablet. They're $100 when you find them on sale. And they're 10 inches. And if all you're going to do is play Solitaire and Bejeweled, you are, it is more than capable. And save your phone for, for mission critical apps that you use every day. And then we got into talking and he said, every time a phone call comes, I get this ad. I almost can't even answer my phone. And I said, that sounds odd. And he goes, is it, I said, what kind of phone is it? He goes, it's a pixel two. I said, that's straight from Google. There shouldn't be anything like that. And I said, did you go through your apps? And I and he goes, no, well I did. There's nothing there that I installed recently. And I said, I bet you anything, something updated and started slowly with one notification here, one notification there. And since you didn't undo it, they kept on adding and adding and adding. So he goes, next time you look at it. So I did look at it. 
He has eight or nine different QR code scanning apps. We removed all those. I think the culprit was some sort of flashlight app. Remember back in the day, the, a flashlight built in natively wasn't a thing. So you had to buy it or you had to download an app. He did that and I tried calling him and guess what? No more full screen ad when someone calls you. So clearly this notification uh, spam type thing, at least on Android, is becoming more and more prevalent. The apps that you have are getting updates and not this, and it may or may it may not be malicious as in malware other than just notification spam. The developers are trying to get you to buy uh, more coins or tokens or donuts or whatever it is and or trying to keep things low by giving you an ad hoping that you click on. Yeah, I I've seen that myself. Uh, anytime I'm around my grandmother and she asks me a question about her phone, I go through her applications because she, undoubtedly she has installed everything that everyone has ever asked her to install in the history of forever. Uh, same thing with Chrome extensions. She will install every Chrome extension. Um, I have cleaned up Chrome on that Chromebook so many times. Uh, so if you're ever around like friends and family, Thanksgiving, Christmas time, birthdays, whatever, um, you know, and, and you get talking about tech stuff or helping somebody with a problem, it's probably a good idea to glance through the applications just to make sure there's no, you know, malware or garbageware in there. Just uh, get rid of that stuff. Um, and if, especially if there's stuff that it might have been useful at one time, but it's not really useful now, like QR code readers or flashlight apps, uh, it might be time to uninstall that because just like Cam Scanner, any of these applications can get bought and sold a bazillion times to a bazillion different developers, some of which are going to be unscrupulous. So that QR code scanner that used to be perfect and open source and it's a marvel and a darling and everybody loves it. Uh, yeah, if it's sold to the wrong person, to the wrong group doing the wrong things, it can definitely be a, uh, a vector for a malware infection. Again, we were saying go through the apps, check and ch first check if you're using the app if you're not using it don't worry google will save it in your cloud library same with ios and you can download it later like when i go when i go to defcon i download the united app just for that week and then i uninstall it i don't need the united app anymore delta or wherever the hilton hotel or wherever i'm staying app until the following year when i go there again uh check all those and you're gonna say oh it takes time yeah it takes a little time but then go and check the apps that you don't need, delete those, but check to see that you're not duplicating functionality. Google Assistant and the, all the other third-party assistants have now been able to do conversions for you, set timers for you. Trust them, they do work. I mean, the voice-to-speech, the text-to-speech is excellent on, on, on all of them. And yes, we make fun of Siri for being completely terrible. At the end of the day, it's, she's okay for most things. And I just go through and see and see what you need and what you don't need. Do you need three different calculator apps or can you just multiply, uh, double the tax or however you figure out double, uh, multiply by 0.2 to get the tip. Can you do that in your head or do you need a, an actual app for that? And you're going to find out that a lot of functionality, in fact, cam scan Google released the other day that now in its photos app, it will start, uh, OC uh, searching text which is one of the features Cam Scanner had built in. Again, now something that you don't need that for. So can you replicate it using either Google or Apple services that are native to the operating system? Yeah, I mean, uh, when it comes to features that you would get in an application versus using features that are built into the OS, even if they're not as shiny or as fancy, uh, most of the time you are so much better off using whatever is built into the device as you get it because it's going to be updated uh you're not going to get a bunch of trashware and, and ads and everything else loaded into it by default um and uh, you know when it comes to google built apps on your google phone running your google operating system they're probably ble uh, probably not going to put in you know weird ad laden uh, you know, it's subscription causing malware into their own applications. Um, the chances of them getting you know, or being hit by a uh, you know, supply chain attack of their, of their own apps is extremely minor. Uh, so you're always better going with the default OS stuff rather than installing another third party app. And don't listen to the person down the street from you that says, oh, this email, the, the mail app on iOS is just complete garbage because it doesn't do this 
esoteric feature. Apple hears you. Google hears you. If there's something that really bothers you, you're not probably the only one unless you're 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 this one little niche market. So the person down the street saying all this is probably doing something way more technical than you. I have found very few instances where an alternative app is in fact better than the built-in app for just about anything. And if if that weird esoteric feature is uh, a PGP mail on your phone, right. don't worry, you're never going to get an encrypted email and you're never yeah. going to send one either. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I mean, what was I going to say? I still use Notepad. I mean, we still use Notepad and text edit for just the majority of stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that why why use Word when Notepad just works for just about everything? Yeah, I uh, I find myself using um, you know Apple's Reminders app. It's it's fine. I I have a list of things I need to do. I add it to the list. I check it off when I'm done. I don't need like any kind of weird feature where it tries to reprioritize my life or hook into my calendar or do anything extra. I just I want text on a page with some check boxes next to it, and Apple's Reminders does that perfectly. So. Tom's definitely uh, drank the Kool Aid there, and we're the yeah, exact opposite. For sure. He's all iOS, and I'm all here Mac with an Android phone. But we're getting there pretty soon. Pretty soon. I'm I'm not going to say when. I mean, it is the year of the Linux desktop after all. But pretty soon, we'll all just be running Ubuntu on on big big giant Nokia's in our pockets with a battery backpack that we wear in our cyberpunk future. No, with our hologram gonna, glasses. We're, we're just going to have Docker containers for everything. Or yes. One monitor with some thin client, and you have to push the Docker container that you want. <laughs> the, uh, the, only, the only issue with that is that uh, uh, containers are not a security boundary, uh, as this wonderful sticker that you sent me has illustrated. From your competitor. Yes. <laughs> yes, but... She was happy to send it and she will send more if need be to prove that container security is not real security. So anyway, we're a little, I mean, we have some more time, but I figured this is a good point to end. And I don't know what we're going to do next week, but hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we have either this setup working or we're moving to a new setup, but we promise that we at least will have good audio at least hopefully. Absolutely. If we have to dust off Skype and figure out the difference between Skype and Skype for business and Skype on Linux and Skype on Mac and whatever else they want to call it, we're going to try our hardest not to do it, but we're probably just going to buy some windows phones and use Skype for windows phone. The, if Whatever works, you can probably buy windows phone for super cheap at this point. So anyway, we have a few minutes left, but anyway, let's leave now and hopefully this all works. So good night, everyone. See you, everyone. Bye. Okay. Video worked. I saw Video you. Video did work. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop up. Um, I'm gonna kill our stream real quick. And.